Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Edison Club. Thank you for being here with me today, as we are about to embark on our brand new journey of destruction. Are you into high rarity snobbery? I am not worthy. Or perhaps you prefer the common man's bargain hunt. What the? What the? Yugi? Is that a? Is that a Lila? Normal summon Lumina in phase mill. Wolf, wolf, wolf. Watch your opponent devolve into tears. <coughs> Stack for plague spreader. Make Brionic. Brio them into oblivion. Why me? Special summon Judgment Dragon. Nuke everything. Does this sound appealing to you? Well then you've come to the right place. Welcome to the Edison Club's Ultimate Light Sworn Guide. What's going on everyone? And welcome back to the Edison Club on episode number one of our new video series, The Ultimate Light Sworn Guide, brother. Hope you guys enjoyed that new introduction and my best Randy Savage impersonation. As always, guys, before we get started with today's video, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe. It really motivates me to keep going and motivates me to keep making the ultimate Light Sworn Guide. We want to drop Judgment Dragon, guys. We want to blow up our opponent's board, watch them suffer. So if you want more of that, definitely hit the like, the like button and the subscribe button. Share it to your friends because I know as well as you do, everyone loves Light Sworn. So... Today's discussion video is going to be all about the different deck builds of Light Sworn, and I'm kind of going to go over the normal cards that you would see included in the Light Sworn deck and some tech cards that might be a little less known about. So, right here is going to be a primary example of regular, old, just pure Light Sworn. So, this is primarily going to run only Light Sworn monsters in their normal quantity. So, normally you're going to see like something along the case of one Arcus. Two Celestia, one Aaron, one Garoth, uh, one to two Jane. I am personally a big fan of playing two of this card. I think a 2100 normal summon that also mills two really just does a lot of what the uh, what you want the deck to do. Uh, you're always going to have two Judgment Dragon, uh, one Lumina because that's all that you can play. One to two Lila. Sometimes I really want to cut this card to one. I've pretty much always played two as a standard, but... I do think that there is an argument to playing one. Some people actually play three, like in the Christia Sworn deck. I personally think that's too much. Um, usually going to see two to three Ryko. Some people play one Hamster. Some people play zero Hamster. I am also a big believer that in Pure Light Sworn, we're going big. I think in Pure Light Sworn, you should always be playing triple copies of Wolf. Obviously, there are no absolutes in Yu-Gi-Oh!, everyone has different opinions, and that's okay. That's what makes the, gr the game great. That's what makes the game so appealing to me is the different opinions and how you can just try all these crazy things so but my personal opinion i always like three obviously play the one charge some builds play gold sarcophagus i'm actually not a huge fan of gold sarcophagus right now uh gold sarcophagus is a very good card um for building your light sworn deck to well be able to combat the mirror match better because the mirror match is going to be all about who can see judgment dragon first and gold sarcophagus just helps you with that in my personal opinion, I don't like Gold Sark and Pure Light Sworn right now because I think the deck needs to be built to combat Blackwing as best as it can. And I think that kind of every card in your deck needs to be a real card, aside from Wolf, because we're always going to play Triple Wolf. But I don't really want three Wolf and double Gold Sark in my deck. I want my cards to be able to do as many things as possible. And that's just how I choose to build my Light Sworn deck. But you can build yours however you want. Um, here's a big one that I'm a fan of. I'm actually more of a fan of Monster Reincarnation in Pure Light Sworn over Beckoning Light because normally in Pure Light Sworn, you're not trying to swap your hand for a different hand like you are in Christia Sworn. Christia Sworn, you can flip over Beckoning Light and essentially just swap your hand for another hand and be able to summon stuff like Christia Soul, Purity, and Light. But in this one, a lot of times you're just wanting to get rid of something like a Necro Garden, a Plague Spread, or a Dead Wolf to be able to swap it for a Judgment Dragon or an Honest. So... That's pretty much the rundown on pure Light Sworn, and we have a couple variants of Light Sworn here we're going to cover. Um, this next one here is actually what most people would consider to be Twilight Sworn. In my recent months of testing, I've actually found that Twilight Sworn should actually be played significantly different from how most people seem that should be played. I personally am not a big fan of throwing Chaos Sorcerer and cards like 
throwing cards like Chaos Sorcerer and Tragodia just into the deck mindlessly just to be darks for the one Chaos Sorcerer, I don't really think that it's worth it. In my opinion, I think that uh, Twilight Sworn looks more like mixing Light Sworns with zombies and incorporating Chaos Sorcerer, things like that. I just think, when, in my personal opinion and the testing that I've given to this deck, I think that this deck is more clunky than Pure Light Sworn. I do think that Light Sworn has better top decks. So here you can see we have like Three Wolf, we have Gold Sark, we have Tragodia, who I am also just not a big fan of in Light Sworn in general, but we'll, we'll circle back around to that. But um, I definitely have played Twilight Sworn in the past. I don't think that it's a terrible deck. I just think that there are better options. Now we're going to get into the third build of Light Sworn here. The build that I am current that I am not a big fan of. So quick backstory. When this deck won or topped, I believe it was James Ark that either won or topped with this. Um, sorry that I don't have the exact facts, but I was so infatuated with this deck. Because when you look at this deck on paper, you really say, oh my god, this deck should be just absolutely insane. Guys, I played this deck for over two to three months, and I never once felt like I was safe in a single game that I played. I felt like I was always running for my life. This deck requires you to tank large amounts of damage to try to win in the mid to the late game when you'll start dropping stuff like JD, Soul of Purity, Christia, which is all fine and dandy as long as that's how it's working. And unfortunately for me, I took this deck to several tournaments and just did not have a good experience. Drawing multiple Christias alongside Judgment Dragon, drawing Christias alongside Soul of Purity and Light, drawing too many copies of Hamster, too many copies of Raikou altogether. I know that it's kind of like a meme in the Light Sworn community that like the bad Light Sworn players want to mill Wolf. But in my opinion, this is just my opinion. Once again, there are no absolutes in Yu-Gi-Oh. In my opinion, Light Sworn was made to be able to get free card advantage off sending cards from deck to the graveyard. So I think that that is how the deck should be built. I think that you should be milling cards like Wolf to the graveyard. I do understand the theory. I do understand the theory here that while you don't mill any quote-unquote real cards in this, you're milling cards that are going to set up your game plan later. You're going to be milling fairies for Soul of Purity, fairies for Christia, all kinds of things like that, trying to set up your game plan mid to late. My biggest experience with this deck was it was pretty much impossible to beat even a base skill player Blackwing. A base skill, basic skill Blackwing player. I don't think that throughout the history of me playing this deck, I ever beat a Blackwing player once. I went to the PS5 event in uh, Philadelphia, or yes, Philadelphia, earlier this year, and actually just did not win against anyone that I played against. And I know that some people say, oh, this deck is different to play, it's different to play, but when you when your only option is to summon Lila and pass and it's not enough, I don't really think that that's a misplay. I think that you're just doing all that your deck has been capable of doing. Obviously, this is a good deck. It worked well enough for James Ark. He's a great player. Not going to be here to uh, talk bad about his deck. I'm just saying for me personally, this has been my least favorite variant of Christia Sworn. But if you like it, that's what this is for. This is your guide. I'm your guide through all of the Light Sworn stuff. So pick one of these variants, whether you're the tried and true, the original OG Light Sworn player, or maybe you like to spice it up, throwing in some darks in there, or maybe you're a big fan of a Christia Sworn deck. It's not up to me. It's completely up to you. For the final portion of this video, we're going to go over some cards that you will commonly see across the board and Light Sworn. So, the top few rows here, we kind of already covered. Uh, most of the time you're going to see these cards played in some form of ratio here. You'll notice that in the Christia Sworn deck, it completely omits uh, Wolf, Light Sworn, Beast. And Soul Purity and Light kind of takes the place of Wolf in this build, being your free drop, very big. Uh, there's not really anything in the format, I believe, that can attack over this card, as she does make all of your opponents attacking monsters lose 300 attack during their battle phase. So, so you're going to see these cards played in some variation of the deck, all the way up to about right here, or maybe actually about right here. So we've already kind of covered Monster Reincarnation versus Beckoning Light, how I feel as if in Pure Light Sworn, Monster Reincarnation is just a little bit better, and in Christia Sworn, Beckoning Light's great. Obviously, both of these cards are very good. You can really play either one that you want to. I'm going to give you my personal opinion on what works for me. 
The next card is Pot of Avarice, which is also a recycler for the deck. Currently in my Light Sworn list, I'm playing one Avarice and one Reincarnation. Seems to be working pretty good for me. I will say that Beckoning Light does a little bit better job playing around DD, Clo DD Crow post side than these cards do, but sometimes that's just the risk that you take. Then we have our back row removal, aka our outs to stuff like Light Imprisoning Mirror, which Cold Wave actually should be moved here. This is going to be pretty much you're always going to main deck Heavy Storm. Once again, the Christia Sworn deck chooses not to, but you do need cards like Heavy Storm, MST, Giant Tornade, maybe Twister, possibly even Dust Tornado, or I guess technically Royal Decree, to be able to shut off Light Imprisoning Mirror, as Cold Wave does not do that. Cold Wave will only prevent cards that activate uh, from being activated, and Light Mirror and Skill Drain do not. So I'm also not personally a big fan of Cold Wave in the Light Sworn deck. I actually I probably should have had my current Light Sworn list pulled up here, but I always noticed a lot of confliction. There'd be a lot of times where I felt like I could make a big push with something like Monster Reincarnation, but I needed to activate Cold Wave and Monster Reincarnation, which you unfortunately cannot do. It might be a case of just Cold Wave and Beckoning Light maybe working a little bit better together than these two do. But I'm personally not the biggest fan of this card. It, it's it been okay for me. I found myself signing this card out a lot post-side uh, for, for reasons I mentioned earlier in this video. You, it does not take care of stuff like Light and Prisoning Mirror, which is essentially what you're going to always be losing to post-side unless you're playing in the Mirror match. Break of the Magical Warrior. Once again, if you're a Twilight Sworn fan... This guy might be your best friend. He's another out to stuff like Light Imprisoning Mirror. He's 1900. Definitely worth including in the video. Chaos Sorcerer, Phantom of Chaos, Tragodia. Kind of already mentioned these. Another card you're always pretty much going to see, I do believe, even in Christia Sworn. Yep, there he is. It's Card Trooper, the unofficial Light Sworn monster, mills three for cost. Very important there because Card Trooper can still mill under Skill Drain. And goes up to 1900, gets under bottomless, lets you draw cards, helps you advance into drawing cards like Judgment Dragon, runs to Reincarnation. Very important for the overall game plan of the Light Sworn deck. Then we have Gores and our Necro Gardena. And obviously we kind of talked about Tragodia earlier, how I don't really care for Tragodia. I think I actually mentioned that we'd get back around to Tragodia. The main reason why I don't care for Tragodia in this list or in this deck, is because normally Tragodia is going to be played in decks that have a lot of tuners, and you can really take a lot of advantage of the level modulation of Tragodia, pretty much getting you into any synchro that you want. In Light Sworn, or at least pure Light Sworn, you only have one tuner most of the time, which is going to be Plague Spreader Zombie. However, in Christia Sworn, you do have uh, three Herald of Orange Light and Plague Spreader, so um, Tragodia would probably fit in better into Christia Sworn because you do have more tuners to be able to actually make plays of Tragodia. In Pure Light Sworn, I'm only incorporating Gores and Necrogarden. Speaking of Plague Spreader, Plague Spreader is pretty much an inclusion around the board. You're always going to see this guy playing Light Sworn. It's the best tuner, for obvious reasons, sending it from top of, de top of deck to grave. A uh, card I really wanted to talk about here was a card I have been putting in my Pure Light Sworn list for about the past month. And I run one Junk Synchron. Now, before I talk about Junk Synchron, I'll talk about the next card here, which is Reinforcing the Army. That kind of acts like a second charge of Light Brigade, because it can get you into Aaron, Garoth, or Jane, but also Junk Synchron. So I really like including this guy on my list. He brings back Raiko, makes Cataster, makes Magical Android. Also has a few hidden capabilities. If you want, you could throw in something like Junk Archer to be able to uh, have more access to level 7s. And also cards like Zeman the Ape King. So a play to make Zeman the Ape King would be something like Flip Raiko, Pop a Set, Normal Junk, Bring Back a Raiko, Make This Guy. And while that may not sound like it's the best, Pure Light Sworn has a pretty broad extra deck, so you can kind of include things like this. This guy hops over spells and trap cards when you attack, so I think that he could definitely be worth including. I'm trying him out. Probably won't ever actually make him, but this guy also lets you make Arcanite Magician, which is something you normally, probably, I don't believe, could make. Uh, you would be making Arcanite Magician with Junk Synchron and Lila, so something like that would be like, Lila, pop a set. Normal Junk, hopefully bring back Raiko, and uh, then make Arcanite hit two more cards. So, definitely worth it. I've really been liking him. Bonus points for playing him in Twilight. He's another Dark. I really like him at one. He gives Rota more flexibility. Um, before, when I was playing Rota, it felt very narrow. It didn't really feel like Rota was really had that much versatility to it. It's just normally grabbing a beater. Like the most versatility Rota felt like it had for me was Rota being able to spin back a defense position. But now with the Junk Synchron in there, I really do like Rota. 
Light Sworn Saber is pretty much always a zero in the deck. I have pretty much tried out all of the Light Sworn cards that exist within Edison format, and the ones that you don't see people play, well, it's because they actually are pretty terrible. Light Sworn Saber is right there with them. Uh, the next one is Shire Light Sworn Spear. This is almost always going to be included, once again, in the Christia Sworn deck. It's a Light Sworn. It's a fairy. This guy can actually get pretty beefy pretty quickly, so definitely has its applications within Christia Sworn. Pure Light Sworn, not so much. You don't really need her. Genus Light Sworn Lender, no one even knows what this card does. I did try it out for a little while as an extra name. It is 2100 defense, which sometimes could actually be kind of okay, but I think if I was going to go that route, I'd probably just play a second Arcus because Arcus is very strong. Dragoneth is pretty much not included in any Light Sworn list either. I do believe that a few people have tried playing like Light Sworn Dragons before. And this guy is normally included in there. He's actually kind of good. He does piercing battle damage, mills three, gains 300 attack and defense for each Light Sworn monster with a different name in your graveyard. Gets pretty big, but um, he's pretty difficult to summon. So that's why you're normally going to see decks that play stuff like Darkness Metal that can just turbo this guy out very quickly. Archlord Christia, Solar Purity and Light, and Orange Herald of Orange Light we already touched Touch base on talking about Christia Sworn. One of my favorite cards to side deck in Light Sworn is Fiend Comedian because the Light Sworn Mirror Max match is so toxic that whoever opens better, I would say it's like 90 10. Whoever opens better is going to win 90% of the time, regardless of how good of a player you are, how much experience you have with Light Sworn, whatever. And I think that's where this card comes in, kind of a kind of sort of like a pseudo soul release. But this card can either be good to get you the same number of cards in your graveyard as your opponent, therefore catching you up. And it can also be used as a total just blowout and banishing your opponent's entire graveyard. I'm a big fan of this. Anytime I'm playing Light Sworn and I'm traveling somewhere, I feel like there's going to be a lot of Light Sworn players. By the way, I think that Light Sworn is the most accessible deck within Edison format. I'm pretty sure you can build an entire Light Sworn deck, main side and extra, for probably around $50.00. The deck is definitely the cheapest deck to play. Therefore, I feel like it's normally almost always the most represented in person. But anytime I feel like there's going to be a large amount of Light Sworn players, I always have this card, at least at two in my side. Sometimes I play three. Soul Release kind of for the same reason. This also hits Frogs. I feel like in the Frog matchup, though, I want a card that's definitely definitely going to happen and hit the Treeborns, where Fiend Comedian doesn't necessarily always do that. But Fiend Comedian definitely could get the job done. We have Royal Decree. We don't play traps, or if we do play traps, they're very minimal, like Beckoning Light, or a card like, um, if I could type here, Threatening Roar, which I actually can't believe I forgot to even include in here. I have this card at three in my current Light Sworn list, but we don't play that many trap cards. Royal Decree is very good. Royal Decree plus Judgment Dragon makes all of your trap card opponents very sad. Just don't forget if you're signing this card in, that normally I like to take out Gores. I feel like the Confliction here, well... While playing two Decree and one Gores, it probably shouldn't come up. comes up a lot more than it probably should for me, so I normally do take this guy out when I put this card in. Brain Control is pretty much a given. gets even better in the Mirror Match, taking their Light Sworn, tributing it off for Celestia. Book of Moon is a card I'm a big fan of in the deck. I actually play three in my list. Book of Moon can reset your Rikos when your opponent attacks. It's like, let's say my Raiko survives their turn. I flip it, hit their back row. They go to attack it. I can book it face down, pop their monster. Helps you resolve effects under stuff like Skill Drain. Keeps your Judgment Dragons from getting hit with Bottomless Trap Hole. Combos well with Aaron, being able to book something face down, kick it back to the deck with Aaron, and also just get you over stuff without having to worry about Honest and Kalut. Is very good. Big fan of this card in the deck. Consecrated Light pretty much just ruins your Blackwing opponent's day. Says you can't summon Dark Monsters or attack with them. And I can't be destroyed by battle with a Dark Monster, and I take no damage. So... You're kind of seeing where this is going. Also, you can recur this off Beckoning Light and Monster Incarnation. Cyber Dragon is just Cyber Dragon. Bonus points for being a light, recurrable off of these, yet again. Uh, has synergy with Honest. Machine, you know, we're making Chimera Attack. We're ruining Gadget Player's Day. Kaiko the Ghost Destroyer, kind of the same thing. Probably should have been grouped down here with these three, but Graveyard Control, it's a dark if you're playing Chaos Sorcerer. Very good. Call of the Haunted, normally is not going to be included in Pure Light Sworn. Call the Haunted in Christia Sworn is very strong because you can just call the Haunted back a Christia and that just be more than enough. Um, a lot of decks will just fold to uh, Christia being on the field. But in pure, the most you're really going to get out of it is bringing back a card trooper with it if they try to pop this and you get a draw. But 
We've already talked about Gold Sark. I think Gold Sark is 100% and include in every single Light Sworn list. If you are building to combat the mirror, if you're playing in an area where you're going to play a lot of Light Sworn players, you don't want to be caught without this card because I will admit the mirror is very shaky already, and not having this card in your deck makes the mirror that much harder. But if you're building for something else like Black Wings or Value Turbo or Hero Beat, I don't think that this card is being included. I haven't played this card in a couple months. I have not missed it. Other than the times I played against the mirror. So you kind of have to pick your poison there. Some stuff right here. We already talked about Junk Archer. Other lovely options. Red Dragon Archfiend. Dark End Dragon can be made with Brain Control, Mind Control, taking your opponent's Kaius, taking your opponent's Armed Wing. Make this guy. You can play him in Pure Light Sworn if you want. Uh, Trap Eater is another Floodgate out. Uh, mind Control can be side in against stuff like Christia Sworn because you can take their Rikos, you can take their Hamsters, set your own Rikos. It's very, very strong. And then you have like the the Vayu and the Sirocco with that package. And sometimes you can play those. Yeah, it used to be pretty common for Light Sworn decks to conversion side into Vayu Turbo to be able to help combat stuff like Light Imprisoning Mirror and stuff like that post side. And you could essentially just change the way the entire deck plays. Uh, one of my personal favorite cards, and it's very trolly, and people always give you a funny look for dropping it on them, is Shield Crush. Sometimes face-down defense position monsters can just give you kind of an issue running into hamsters, running into Rikos, running into floaters, and Shield Crush kind of just takes care of that. Now, you might be asking, uh, why wouldn't we just include Nobleman of Cross out here? And while it's definitely a possibility, I'm not the biggest fan on knocking and hitting Ryko there, and also hitting Rikos in my own deck. So Shield Crush kind of just takes care of that. Sometimes it can have hidden applications. If you attack directly, they drop a Gores. Most people drop Gores in defense position. You can Shield Crush there. So I did side deck this at two uh, for a couple weeks, and it actually was very good. It hit a lot of Snowman Eaters. It hit a lot of Shining Angels. Uh, it did, unfortunately, hit a couple Goblin Zombies. But hey, you're still clearing it, getting it out of the way. Definitely worth including in here. And then Threatening Roar is my favorite trap to play in Light Sworn. It's chainable. You always feel so safe. Your opponent can't attack you. You're going to live. Light Sworn, above all else, is a control and a stall deck. I used to build Light Sworn and treat it like it was a combo deck. Like I wanted to be able to just do all these big things. Let me just dump my whole deck turn one. And it's really not like that. Basically what you're trying to do with Light Sworn is just whittle down your opponent as much as you can. Stall out the game. Get your best cards in the graveyard like Wolf, like Plague Spreader, Necro Gardena, all these guys. Have your Judgment Dragon with your Sweeper card, like your Heavy Storm, or your Giant Trunade, or your Cold Wave if you choose to play it, or Decree, anything like that. And just kind of start just blowing your opponent out of the game. Threatening Roar prolongs the game. It gets you more turns. It lets you keep your monsters on board for stuff like Celestia, or to keep building up advantage with Garoth and Lumina. Lumina and Garoth, sorry, I'm dyslexic. And it just prolongs the game. It really helps out your game plan. It just lets you live. And I think that's very important for, for Light Sworn to just be able to stay in the game. And I've cut this card from my list several times. I've regretted it nearly every single time I've done it. And it will always be played in my deck, at least at two. But I'm actually currently testing three. So we've already kind of went over the extra deck here. There's not a lot to really say here. Always include Tempest Magician in your extra deck because it does come up. I did not use this card for at least three months. And in the past few weeks, I probably summoned this card for game like four times. So it's, sometimes it's not going to come up, but sometimes it is. And you don't want to be caught without it. And um, this guy is a little more accessible if you play Junk Synchron. You can make her with uh, Junk Synchron and Lumina, which is nice. So Then Flamevel Ur Uraquasius. Uh, he's just my favorite level 6 synchro. I think he's very good. He does piercing. Pierces over Dandelion tokens. Gets a little bit bigger. And sometimes you just don't want to throw your Brio or your um, Goyo Guardian into the wind. And this guy just kind of goes out there. He gets in for a couple turns. He doesn't. He normally doesn't stay on the field very long. They normally make a point to get rid of this guy. Because they're having to play passively and set monsters. They're taking a lot of damage very quickly. So Then Armory Arm. You know, it's just Armory Arm and then Fortress Dragon. So... Yeah, guys, uh, I'm sure with how broad of a deck Light Sworn is, even though it's my it's my favorite deck I've played pretty much ever in every format, and I really enjoy playing it. Uh, I'm not definitely not the Light Sworn master. I know a lot about Light Sworn, but I'm sure even with all of that being said, I'm sure I left out some cards in here. So comment down below if you're if I forgot anything. I realized right before I hit record on this video, I actually forgot to include Card Trooper. I, luckily, I looked through my deck and I was like, what the heck? Card Trooper is literally a Light Sworn card that's not a Light Sworn card. But yeah, guys, this has been episode number one of the Ultimate Light Sworn Guide. And kind of just to 
go over everything we talked about. We talked about the three main builds of Light Sworn that you're going to encounter, Pure Light Sworn, Twilight Sworn, and Chrissy Sworn, and went over this whole list of cards here that we talked about, different tech cards that you'll see played in Light Sworn, some definitely more common than others, but there are still tons of options that you can put in this deck, and it would take me hours to actually go over and talk about every single card you can put in here, but who knows? It could lead for a good discussion in the comments, guys, so... Uh, definitely check back next week. We're going to be doing these weekly, different topics every week, all about Light Sworn. What's its place in the meta? What are its good matchups? What are its bad matchups? And uh, all things of that sort. So, uh, guys, definitely check back. I think I'm probably going to try to do some matchup analysis next week and kind of walk you guys through, in my opinion, what I think you should do in certain scenarios, encountering decks like Gladiator Beast, Blackwing, the Mirror Match, so forth and so forth, and we'll definitely definitely work all that out and hopefully get some more information on Lightsworn out into the open for you guys. All right, guys, this is Mike from the Edison Club signing out until the next one. Take care, everyone.